and welcome to this ANSYS discovery tutorial on getting started with the fill tool for geometry prep for simulation. The fill tool has several uses and applications, including, but not limited to, simplifying existing designs by removing faces like rounds, holes, text, any small faces and unneeded geometry. It can also be used in model repair and surface creation by making patches. The fill tool actually has a very simple workflow. For the primary purpose of removing faces, the selection is the undesirable faces, and the fill tool automates the operation by removing those faces and extending or trimming the remaining faces to form a solid when you execute by activating the tool or completing it. Let's see it in action. Here we have the provided file open. Notice that model is the mode down at the bottom, and that can be set as your default under file settings as the model mode is the preferred mode for geometry modifications. Let's take a look at the basic fill operation. With the previous tutorials, we turned on the tool first and looked through the different options. For fill, it's actually preferred to select first and then turn on the tool to perform the operation. If we want to see more help on the fill tool, we can always press F1 to go into help or use the question mark in the upper right, hover over the fill tool or turn it on and take a look at the different options from here. So let's explore the fill tool with one simple but kind of complex scenario here. There's just one face, but there's a number of faces around it. And the way to use the fill tool is to select what you want to remove. And here we did it with a single click. And you can either activate the fill tool from the hex and from this triad in the halo for modeling, we have the fill tool in the upper left. Notice the keyboard shortcut is F for fill, and we can also activate the fill tool from the ribbon bar in the design tab. Notice that that face is now gone. Allow me to undo so we could take a closer look at what happens. The fill tool takes the selected face, removes it, and extends the neighboring faces until they meet to form a solid. This is used in a number of common applications like removing a round. If we select this round and press F for fill, notice the round is removed and the neighboring faces are extended to these different edges. Here's a scenario where we can see both faces getting trimmed or extended. If I select these two faces over here, let's try to imagine what would happen. If these are eliminated, that means this face and this face will intersect. This one will extend over to here while this one trims down. F for fill, and we could see that happen. This face is now smaller, and this face is larger, and that raised extrusion is now eliminated. The fill tool is often used for removing holes. Notice if I select a hole and press F for fill, it's now removed. The top face and the bottom face have been closed off, and the cylindrical face has been eliminated. I could do that with one or more faces at the same time, so if I have two holes to remove, I can select them both and fill that in as well. With rounds, there's often chains or groups of rounds we want to remove, and one useful shortcut is a double click. Double clicking will select a round chain. These were not technically part of the round chain, so I could hold control, add them into my selection, and when I fill them in, I'll have sharp edges afterwards. Text is another common thing to remove, and if we go ahead and spin the model around a little bit, we could see that we have some text over here. Now there's different ways to spin the model and one way to get into a nice squared up view could be with this little widget in the lower left. I could either get into a view from one direction or a view from another. Now here I might try to do a box select, but the box might select some of the faces on those bolts there. So one useful way to reorient the view is around this little widget is a circle and that allows me to rotate it so now that the text I want to select is more oriented to a box, and if I drag from left to right, only those faces are in the box. It's important to drag from left to right, because if you drag from right to left, it will select any face that the box is touching, which in this case is selecting all those big faces in the background, and if I cross over into that bolt at all, it's going to select those faces too, 99 including a hole. But with left to right, it only selects faces that are completely inside the box. This can be used with other selections like edges and bodies, but right now the default filter is to faces, and here we can see only those 90 faces have been selected. There may be many faces here, and they may be very complex, 
but when it comes to filling, the speed of the fill is mostly based on the remaining faces. So if I press F for fill, we could see that those 90 pretty complex faces have all been removed pretty quickly. While we're here, let's take another look at the box select application for filling. I want to hide these two bodies, so I'm gonna select a face on each while holding control and right click and hide. Now I just have these bolts and some other bodies out of our view. Now these bolts are actually a little special. Uh, you'll notice that if I select one of the rounds on them, and I could either zoom in or use my scroll wheel to select that more easily because it's so small. And if I do F for fill, notice that the same round has been eliminated on all the other bolts. These are instances. They are duplicates of each other. In a bill of materials, they would show up as multiple, and they all originate from the same body or the same file. Now, at the bottom, I have some threading that I may want to get rid of. And what is very common with threading is for there to be a flat face on the end, maybe small or large, maybe in the center, maybe the whole thing, maybe the outside, depends on the shape of the uh, fastener. And there's usually a cylinder left behind here. And so if we want to remove everything here except for those, one workflow is to box select everything at the end and then hold control and click on the faces you do not want to remove. This will deselect them and the fill tool will only eliminate the selected faces, which in this case are a couple rounds and whatever faces make up the thread. And it will leave the planar face and the cylindrical face and our face up here on the head behind as it simplifies that into just a cylinder. Since these bolts are all instances, that simplification is duplicated through the rest. Let's go ahead and right click and show all to bring these components back. Similarly, on the top here, we may wanna get rid of some of these detailed faces, including the round and the pocket and these little steps here. So again, I could drag a box around everything, hold control, and deselect one of the faces I want to keep. So all the faces inside and outside are remaining along with one face on the top and the fill tool will go ahead and simplify that very quickly. If we go ahead and zoom out and come over to the back here, you'll notice that we have some little areas uh, with protrusions and cuts and we can do that with a box. We can remove that with a box select as well. Here, you'll notice that the box select is a little too big, so I could always drag up instead of down, uh, depending on where my other items are. So here I could get that from a good view and we could go ahead and fill that in. Now, another method in addition to box select, because sometimes with box select, there may be additional items in the background that get selected on other bodies. So an additional way to select uh, by a boundary is found under the select tool. If I wanna select everything within this pocket and it's all bounded by one or more faces, there's a select boundary option here and there's two steps. The first step is to select a boundary and that's the face that encloses this pocket. And then the next step is to select a seed face. That's any face in this pocket and that has selected 49 faces. So I could have used a box select here. Boundary also worked really well and I could go ahead and fill that in. While we're in this area, you'll notice that on these nuts, there are these small little faces here. Now, it may so happen that uh, the bolts are instances and filling one will update the others, but I'd like to not have to select each of these and there may be more in the model. So one of the options that we have is to search through the model for similar geometry. Down in the lower right where it will tell you what you have selected, if you click on that, it pops up a menu with groups and power select. If you switch to power select, you'll notice here I can find faces with the same area. Now, in this case, it is searching all bodies, but if we go ahead and turn that off and do the search again, so we're only searching on this body, searching all bodies can take uh, longer depending on the size of your model. Here we have the selected, and if I go ahead and fill them in, notice that it does duplicate to the others. So here, all I need to do is simplify one and the others update. And so this power select searches through either one body or all bodies for geometry related to the one we just selected. Let's take another look at a common use for this, and this could be rounds. 
If I select this one round here, I may want to search all bodies if my goal is to globally remove rounds in the model. And you'll notice that I have a couple options. If I explicitly want to remove just rounds of a specific size, that shows up here. Otherwise, I could pick rounds between two values or less than and equal to either the round I start with, or I could also in enter in any value that I like. Uh, so with this option here, it's selected uh, 82 faces. Uh, some are small, and I you know may not have even seen them. They're uh, here inside of um, uh, the mating area there. Uh, these long vertical ones. Uh, here, there's a round at the bottom I may not have seen, and it's finding them even in other bodies. So from here, we could use the fill tool, and it goes ahead and simplifies those all down to nice sharp edges. Last but not least, let's take a look at holes. You'll notice that there is an array of holes on the back, and if this was all I was concerned with removing, I could get into a good view, drag a box, now, one thing with box select is you can pause to get a preview of what's going to be selected. Now, if I didn't start the box high enough up, I wouldn't have actually gotten all of the cylinders, all of the holes on the top. So here I could pause and see I don't have a good selection. Uh, I could either restart the selection or here, because the holes are going in an upward direction, it's a little better to start below and drag up. Now, if these are the only holes I need to remove, I would just go ahead and fill them in. But I may be concerned that there are holes somewhere else on this body. So I could weave all bodies off. I could drag a box around the hole. I need to make sure that I drag it large enough. And there's my preview. And I could either grab holes equal to that size, uh, equal to or smaller. Uh, there are two faces that I've selected. It's the cylindrical face and also the bottom of the hole. So this would allow me to grab faces with that area or I could grab cylinders with a certain value. So I have a few options here in terms of how I can select things. Now, if I do holes equal to that size, I could go ahead and press Z for zoom and it'll bring them all into my view. And here I can see that we happen to have some holes of this size elsewhere on this body. If I'm curious if I have these holes elsewhere in the model, I can turn on search all bodies. It will recalculate. Here it's finding some pattern members as these were created with a uh, pattern. Uh, but here I could grab all those equal radii cylinders or holes equal to a certain size. Z is a universal zoom. So if uh, I hit Z now, it'll zoom to what is selected. And here I can see all of these different holes in the model. Uh, we could change them with pole or move them around. But in this case, I could go ahead and fill them in to simplify with the fill tool. Thank you for watching this getting started tutorial on fill for geometry prep for simulation. Please take a look at additional tutorials for getting started and in-depth learning.